Hello, and welcome to Flying Failures, where we'll be looking at the SN Case SE2010 Armagnac. Built along the same lines as the larger and more notable Bristol Brabazon of the UK, the SN Case Armagnac attempted to continue the philosophy of early aviation in that commercial airliners could easily fill the role of ocean liners in the sky, presenting sleeping accommodation and other lavish features commonly found aboard passenger vessels of the era. Unfortunately, the limitations of aircraft technology for the time saw this gigantic machine never fill the role it was built to serve, leading to it not being taken up by its original launch customer and withdrawn by its first operator after only eight months. The SN Case Armagnac can trace its roots back to the dark days of World War II, as during a period when France was occupied by the forces of Nazi Germany and with victory still not assured, French designers began developing plans for a long-range commercial airliner that would be used to serve the North Atlantic route to French Quebec and the United States. To do this, the government in exile enlisted the expertise of the Société Nationale de Constructions Aeronautiques de Sud-Est, or SN Case, to develop a propeller airliner dubbed the SE2000, that would have been powered by four 2,100 horsepower Nombron 18R engines and would have been capable of carrying 87 passengers at a 13,000 foot cruising altitude thanks to its use of an extremely wide fuselage. However, as the proposals of the equivalent British development of prospective post war airliners were unveiled, this being undertaken as part of the Brabazon Committee, it was clear to the French designers how far commercial airliner technology had gone beyond what was considered for the SE2000, specifically the introduction of pressurization and other facets leading to this scheme being scrapped in 1944. Instead, what replaced it was an enlarged version dubbed the SE2010 Armagnac, so named for the famous French brandy produced in the Armagnac region of Gascony, southwest France, the fundamental principles of the design being to incorporate a pressurized fuselage. Meanwhile, intentions were to create an airliner that came in four variants that would serve either the transatlantic run to North America, the vital colonial service to Saigon in French Indochina, or short-haul high-capacity operations to destinations such as Algeria and Tunisia. This would come to pass as a 60-passenger sleeper variant that would include triple-stacked sleeping berths and three-day seating versions in 84, 108, and 160 passenger configurations with six abreast seating, the lower-capacity variants being designed to include onboard amenities such as a cafe bar and a communal lounge area, while the full 160-seat version was dedicated for the high-demand Paris-Nice-Algiers service. The enthusiasm to build the Armagnac was carried through after the defeat of Nazi Germany and the liberation of France, with French builders immediately setting to work on creating the SE2010 at the SNK facilities of Toulouse, Marseille and Paris, where various components were being built and tested, production of the airliner to adopt the American-derived cook craigie method of assembly that allowed for the rapid building of units as per wartime conditions. Having created the largest civil aircraft ever built for the time, with a wingspan of 164 feet, a fuselage width of 15 feet, and a total weight of nearly 78 tons, the first prototype took to the skies on April 2, 1949, with Sud Est chief test pilot Pierre Nadeau at the controls. The prototype, Foxtrot Whiskey Alpha Victor Alpha, would not undergo tests for long, as on January 30, 1950, the wing leading edge panel separated shortly after takeoff and the airliner crashed near Toulouse Blagnac Airport in southern France, killing two of the 11 people aboard, together with one person on the ground. Regardless of the prototype's loss, though, work on the production units continued at pace, with the first example, Foxtrot Bravo Alpha Victor Delta, undertaking its maiden voyage on December 30th of the same year, and was subsequently demonstrated at the 1951 and 1953 Paris Grand Palais. Intentions were for a batch of 15 initial units to be produced for Air France so as to work the colonial route to Saigon and the transatlantic run to Quebec, with options for a further 15 units should assessment of the Armagnac prove successful. However, Air France, upon their own thorough assessment of the aircraft prior to accepting the first unit, were less than impressed with the Armagnac, their biggest bone of contention being with the model's severe lack of power that hampered the potential range of the machine on long-distance runs. The SE-2010 was fitted with four Pratt & Whitney R4360 B13 Wasp Major engines 
which were, at the time, the most powerful aircraft engines in the world, but even these were only capable of achieving a flying range of 3,100 miles against Air France's requirement of 4,000 miles so as to work the transatlantic front efficiently. At the same time, the national carrier took issue with the Armagnac's enormous size that, even with 160 passengers in six abreast seating, was far too large for the demand on even the highest capacity runs between Paris and the colonies of North Africa, thus leading to an abysmal cost per seat mile ratio. In the end, Air France rejected the Armagnac in 1952, just as the first production models were leaving the assembly line, completely undermining the business case of the airliner, and thus seeing only eight production units, alongside the original prototype, ever built for this model. Desperate to seek new customers for their surplus of gigantic airliners, the first operator of the SE-2010 would eventually be TAI, or Transport Ariane Intercontinentaux, the precursor to France's colonial airline UTA, with four examples being delivered on December 8, 1952, to work their prime colonial service from Paris to Hanoi in French Indochina via Tunis, Damascus, Karachi, Bangkok and Saigon. Other colonial routes for TAI's Armagnacs would include the run to Antanarivo in Madagascar via Algiers, Fort Lamy, Douala and Brazzaville, Abidjan in the Côte d'Ivoire via Casablanca and Bamako, and Dakar in Senegal also via Casablanca and Bamako. Meanwhile, SN Case, in an attempt to improve the breed and drum up commercial interest, intended to retain the prospective 15th and final production aircraft as a testbed for 5,400 horsepower Allison T-40 turboprops from the Douglas A2D Skyshark, though this was dropped when the final assembly run was curtailed at eight units. However, Armagnac SO-2060 would find itself in the role of an engine testbed, and was alternately fitted with turbojet engines fitted in a nacelle below the fuselage that included two Snecma Atar 101 turbojets from the Dassault MD-450 Ouragan that were trialled with differing afterburner systems. However, TAI, finding that the Armagnac was severely underpowered and highly unprofitable, opted to abandon the model after only eight months of service, and the four operational units, together with the remaining four production models, went into storage at Toulouse, pending an uncertain future. The Armagnac would ultimately find further use with Sagata, or Société Auxiliaire de Gérance d'Exploitation de Transport Aérien, an airline hired by the French Armed Forces to provide troop transports during the First Indochina War, when communist factions under the leadership of Ho Chi Minh rose up against their destabilized French masters in 1946, following the withdrawal of occupying Japanese forces during World War II. Seven Armagnacs would eventually be assigned to run troop ferry flights from Toulouse to Saigon via Beirut, Karachi and Calcutta until August 1, 1954, when following the decisive French defeat at the Battle of Mangyang Pass, an armistice came into effect that split the former colony of French Indochina into North and South Vietnam. Subsequent to this, Sagata retained the Armagnac for charter service, primarily operating on long-distance runs to the French colonies, as well as Saigon in the newly formed state of South Vietnam, two units being retained by the airline, while the remainder was scrapped by the end of 1955. However, one of the surviving examples, Foxtrot Bravo Alpha Victor Golf, would be lost on January 29, 1957, when after operating a routine flight from Tunis to Paris Orly, the airliner crashed during a nighttime missed approach and poor visibility conditions, coming down off the runway due to a loss of spatial awareness by the pilots that led to the death of one crew member and 33 injuries among the airliner's complement of 70 people. Before its destruction, though, the aircraft, together with its surviving stablemate, Foxtrot Bravo Alpha Victor India, had been used to transport the French contingent of the 1956 Olympic Games held in Melbourne, Victoria, Foxtrot Bravo Alpha Victor India eventually being retired in 1959 and remained dormant at Bordeaux Merignac Airport for 16 years until finally being broken up for scrap in 1975. In the end, the SN Case SE 2010 Armagnac, while a generally unsuccessful concept due to the limited capabilities of contemporary engines, was perhaps the first delve of the aviation industry into the concept of wide-body airliners. Despite it never operating in its primary role as a flying sleeper, the model's ability to accommodate six abreast seating was one completely pioneering for the time, and wouldn't be repeated until the arrival of jet airliners at the end of the 1950s, such as the Boeing 707 and Douglas DC-8. 
Ultimately, the Armagnac's main hindrance was a lack of suitable technology to power its immense bulk, though had such power been available, and the machine capable of meeting the range requirements of Air France, the Armagnac could have succeeded where the Brabazon failed in providing comfortable overnight air travel in a manner not too dissimilar to the ocean liners it intended to replace. <laughs>